It's a new day. We're doing a lovely talkie walkie here in Brooklyn. I'm here with Erica Spira. You know her from her appearances on uh, The Late Show, her multiple podcasts. Uh, she's a, a regular to all the clubs, all the clubs in the city. And now I just went out and she's by coastal. Gonna be LA, New York, LA, New York. Killing it on both coasts. Erica, welcome to Talkie Walkie. Hello, thank you for having me. Now we have uh, something to promote. Let's just get it out of the way. Yeah. November 8th. November 8th. Eric and I. Co headlining. Co headlining. Part of the New York Comedy Festival. New York Comedy Festival. We're headlining the entire New York Comedy Festival. <laughs> That's not <laughs> yes, exactly. the whole thing. Where the, where the headlining at? <laughs> I don't know if you've seen the poster, they yeah. forgot us. But you know, we are uh, at the tiny cover, November 8th, co-headlining. It's, it's going to be fun. The show's called 30-something because I thought we'd each do like 30-something, like minutes. Yeah. But then um, it's like we're also in our 30s. Exactly. So it, it could be double, <laughs> could be double things. And then actually the next day, I have to do my own show at Littlefield. Oh, shit. And I'm very scared about selling tickets to that show. <laughs> Cause it's like 300 or 280 tickets. Yeah, just sell ours out first, and then yeah, go see. Well, the, Marcus the good the next thing day. about Tiny Cupboard is that it'll probably it has like a built-in audience. It does. So yeah. So we'll be fine no matter what. But like little feel like, oh, <laughs> it's very ambitious. But that's all right. That's all right. So we are walking. Where? What part of Brooklyn are we in right now? We're in Fort Greene. Fort Greene. Fort okay. Greene by DeKalb Market. Great area. De yeah. Yeah. Uh, I fell in, lo in love with this area, personally. I started dog sitting near here. That's a that's a great way to make some extra cash, huh? Yeah, well, also, I uh, live in Jersey when I'm here, so it's more commute-wise, it's great. And you just get into one nice building, and you just meet all the other dogs. Oh. And it just kind of built. So wait, it's not you, that bad. Are you a dog sitter just for one building, then? Essentially, yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, it's, it's pretty convenient. <laughs> Do you like dogs? Can I be honest with you? I'm yeah, not a please. big pet person. Wow. I'm really not. So I'm like fussy about it. I won't just watch any dog. <laughs> okay. It's I, to me, it's like, what do people say? All dogs go to heaven? Sure. That's oh. not true. No, <laughs> that's not true. No. Some of your dogs suck. Yeah. That's... And you and the people that ignore that their dogs suck are the worst. They're like, my dog's the best. It's like, it's not. No, it's really not. You know, I used to have this joke about dogs. It was so bad, but it was it went um. And I usually don't run bits on here, but it was um, I had a, uh, a dog that worked for the FBI. Really? His name was Classifido. Oh, wow. Uh, hey. Funds. I never, uh, <laughs> think, I, don't, I don't think that ever made it to stage. That's all right. But I think I tweeted it or something. But like, but how did you get this job working for dogs? My like, good friend has a dog. She's going out of town. So she hit me up like, hey, could you watch my dog for a week? I was like, great. Stay at her place. Wonderful. Then you meet like the next door neighbor. Yeah. It's great. And her dog's great. So then now I'm watching her dog. Okay. And it's like one by one within the building. Okay. And do you think like when the dogs see you, do they get excited? Like, oh, they're going to go on a walk? Like, do they know what you're yeah. doing? Yeah, the one dog I actually did, like, fall in love with where I was oh. like, I get it. I oh. get the pet people now. See? I kind of became one temporarily. That's so funny. But I'm still not a, like, any dog I see, I'm like, oh, my God! Oh, my God! Give I, me that dog! Some I get, dogs are like kids. Some exactly. kids fucking suck, right? Yes. Everybody I, thinks their kid's the best, and they're not. Well, I can... So, my wife came with cats. And I was never a cat person oh, or oh. a dog person. Ooh. I never grew like the pets I had growing up were like frogs, fish, snakes, bunnies, like scorpions. I had like weird little pets. Ooh. Nothing they got to you like. You had reptiles, man. Those I are not reptiles. pets. Those are yeah, not those are pets. not. Well, I had a bunny, two bunnies. Oh, a bunny. Sorry, excuse me. Stuff too. But um, then my so but I slowly became like a cat guy oh. over time, and it's. I never thought my life would be, I'd turn into like a cat guy my entire life. Well, yeah, I have I a theory on cat men. Please. They're relationship guys. Oh, I love to hear so, that. So. so you were relationship guy, cat guy came second. Okay. But there's a correlation with like any guy that I see really cuddle up with a cat is typically in a relationship. Well, I'm glad you brought this up because you have a podcast about relationships. Yeah. And, um... It sh oh, shoot, what's it called? Shoot, shoot. I got Shooters Gotta Shoot. Shooters Gotta Shoot. Uh, which I mainly have the comedians on. Okay. And then I have Finding Mr. Height, which is almost like a more professional version. That's where we actually interview like more experts and stuff like oh, that. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, okay, so what what else can you tell me about relationships that I may not know as a, mm. you know, f from a ma right, female's perspective? Maybe that maybe that question was too vague. No, no, no. Uh, it's like, well, what can I talk about? Well, are your listeners mainly men, women? What do we got? It's, it's, it's very much split. Men really? and women. Really? Yeah. Oh, this is very interesting. Okay. Yeah. I'll talk to the men first. Talk to the men. My biggest piece of advice if you're a single man yes. is literally just make a plan for a date. Make them. Oh, like, okay. Like, if you just can make plans and take charge of the plan part, you are so much more likely to get laid or get a girlfriend. 
It's the number one thing women want. Interesting. So you want us to take the initiative, pick the place for dinner. Uh, Not even dinner, just anything. Oh, just and here's, plan. And here's the thing oh. a lot of guys that are good at a plan do. Uh -huh. They take everyone to the same fucking place. We don't know. Uh, we also don't really care if that's the case. Really? Like, find a couple good bars that you think are great date spot bars in a few different variety of neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, like, pick something in the middle. Okay. The real chivalrous move is you go to their neighborhood. But oh. then that's where men panic. They go, well, I don't know your neighborhood as well. well I don't know, where do I go? And it's like, bro, Google Maps. Yeah. Just bars. Because yeah. here's the thing. Men pay for the first date, what, 90% of the time. Okay. So when you throw to the woman to pick the place, we're like, I'm not paying. So you pick. So how do you feel about men paying on the first date? Do you think that's the thing that they should do? Yeah, okay. absolutely. It's the only part of life that is more expensive for men. And a lot of men, any man that like battles me on this, I'm like, yeah, bro, I just wouldn't date you. Okay. Go ahead. There's plenty of women that w don't care. True. I care. I yeah. care very much. True. Because I think it does show your interest. Anytime a man has split a bill with me on a first date, I never go. He, he doesn't that even ask me on, his, wow. on a second date. And it's like, it's telling. Yeah. Because it's it's embarrassing for you, honestly. But how do you know that it's a date and not just like friends hanging That's out? That's how you know it's a date. Somebody pays. I am anti-splitting. Oh. So I'm all for if the woman pays, sometimes cool. Man pays. Wait, so I, the splitting is unromantic. That's how you know. That's how you know. That's how you know it's a date. Because I had, I don't know about you, first date of your life, you pick? First date with my wife. First I, couple dates? It's usually like the first three. Well, that I we pay. had, yeah, I did. I right. did because we went, the first date, this is funny, we met at a bar. We had, okay. like, we had been talking for eight months without meeting. Wow. Wow. Because I lived in New York, she lives in Wisconsin. Wow. So okay. we talked, maybe not eight months, maybe it was a couple months though, a good, like six, at least six months. We both were like seeing other people and we both became single. We met each other at a bar and we were together from that moment on. And our first date was at a bar. Our second date, I took it to a Milwaukee Bucks basketball game. So oh, I paid fun. for the ticket. Very fun. Our third date, we went on a cruise that I paid for. Wait, like like a week cruise? A week, yeah. We fell wow. in love on a cruise. Okay. Well, I didn't actually pay for it. I misspoke. I It was free because I was performing, you were performing on, it. on it. But hey, but I could you invited her to go. Okay. And she went. So that was kind of like wow. we spent a week together to get to know each other. And then we, you know what was really cute? Was, and I'm sorry to like hijack this. No, no, part no. I'm interested. Podcast, but after the cruise, we like at the Fort Lauderdale airport, like I gave her a hug and I told her I loved her and she said it back. And then we were, it was like from that moment on, we were just been like attached at the hip. Oh, that's so sweet. Very it makes sense though. If you're talking eight months, I assume you're doing FaceTimes, phone calls. No FaceTime, just phone. Uh, but long phone calls? Because that, because there's a, a few, matchmaker that counts that as dates if you talk on the phone for at least 20 minutes. A few phone calls. Yeah, yeah definitely okay. a few phone so calls. So you technically had like, been on a handful of dates before actually meeting her. So it makes sense to me. It really oh, does. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. so that's not so weird. No, you actually had a little bit of an almost love is blind situation if you weren't even FaceTiming. But I knew what she looked like. Yes, but you know I, what I would mean? Like, you're stalk focusing her on the conversation. Facebook photos. <laughs> I went back deep. I was like, dang. <laughs> dang. No, there, are, there are teenagers here and they are about to make fun of us. We need to move. All we need right, to move. Let's go. let's go. They are looking. I it's can't handle it. Uh, my ego can't handle All it. All right. Nope. Nope. We're going to get roasted in three seconds. <laughs> I don't care. I, I'm like, know, please don't talk about this, my outfit. I can't tell you how many times this podcast has been penis bombed where people just walk by and go, penis. <laughs> and I love it. Like, to me, that's what I would do too. So I think it's so funny. Yeah, I, I felt it. I felt them being like, who the, who the oh, fuck yeah. are these people? I was like, oh, we gotta go. Yeah, we gotta yeah. go. I'm about to get roasted. Am, Better than uh, I've been roasted before. I know. If this wasn't everyone's favorite podcast, I'd be so uh, self-conscious doing it. Because yeah. I'm doing it for the people. They love it. Okay, but no, here's a question know. for the men listening, all right? right? All right, question for the, for the first date. Yes. Anytime a man comes at me at this, I'm like, okay, aside, besides dating, name an area of life that is more expensive for men. And they have no answer. You're right. No Hair, answer. Haircuts are cheaper for men. Haircuts uh, are even cheaper, right? I'm now we're think. going more unisex where it's like short haircut versus long. So now yours actually might get more expensive, <laughs> depending on where you go. Well, I got my buddy Tom, <laughs> and when he's not in rehab, he gives a good haircut. Oh, good for Tom. Uh, yeah. And um, <laughs> that's why my hair is so long. Yeah. Because my guys, my honestly, my barber's been in rehab for a couple months, so I can't get Well, it. listen, you're supporting the cause now. Oh, absolutely. It's like no I shave November, but for your hairdresser. <laughs> yeah, no drinking. <laughs> No yeah. more drinking. <laughs> All right. I love I love the guy. He's a good friend. And he's talked openly before about his uh, time yeah. in rehab. So I don't feel like I'm... No, no, no. I'm uh, spilling Listen, the beans. Listen, everyone should go to rehab, I think. Oh, wow. All okay. of us have some addictions we should uh, probably get rid of. You had any uh, guys that you've talked to or have talked to other people that have like really pervy kinks that you're just like uh, can't get around? I bring this up. I was at the New York Comedy Club last mm -hmm. night and one girl told me she had a, she was in defeat. 
Oh, the in girl the audience. Was. The girl into was into feet. That's wow. what I did. I was like, oh, I've heard guys into feet. That's a that's But first. she's like, no, I'm really into feet. Oh, she interesting. She was like, take off your socks. I was like, what? <laughs> no. <laughs> what, what, what you want? Uh, you interesting, because I feel like anyone that takes care of their feet, it does automatically make them more attractive. Oh, yeah. Right? yeah. So that doesn't even count as a kick. That's well, just like well, some well, basic How do you take care of your feet? What? Uh, well, you men do that? get pedicures. Oh, you know We love it. I did that once. I got a pedicure. Then I got an ingrown toenail. And I had to get my big toe surgically removed. Listen. Listen. The toenail, not the toe. Okay. Re relax, all right? You Sorry. should still get pedicures. Men right. listening, don't listen to that. All right. I take my guy friends with me all the time. All right. Just especially like the beginning of the summer, at least get one. Get all it right. cleaned up. Maybe I should go get, you know, I'm going you to know? Mexico on you Saturday. Should. I should get a you pedicure, should. huh? It's a gift for your wife. You should do that. Well, she won't be there, but um, yeah. Yeah, in terms of, you know what? I've had like people on apps yeah. immediately open with, <laughs> basically being like, all right, so I just got to run this by you. I'm kind of getting into BDSM. Oh. Uh, which I'm like, all right, if that's what you're into. But like, I've never been in a super long-term relationship to like hit the point that I would even be trusting enough to try that. Sure. But I'm like, I'm not going to get into that first communicating. So I am an open-minded person now. Oh, like, I'd love to hear that. Uh, maybe I would like it. I don't know. I'm yeah. going to try it, right? Yeah. And I'll say like, hey, uh, that's a wide spectrum, first of all. That is. It's so wide because it's like. Because it could just be like a little like choking, right? <laughs> okay, a little, yeah. some bondage. But here's the thing. I but feel like someone bringing it up means a lot more. Yeah. But that's where I go. I'm like, I've done like you get tied up a little bit. You have a little choking, a little ass slapping, whatever, right? Sure. But then I'm, it's like they get like mad. <laughs> I had one person get mad. He was like, I don't want to hear about you and other men. I'm like, bro, what? It's like, how do you think I know I like these things? You right. think I'm doing you, this to myself? No, you shouldn't probably do that it's to yourself. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, That's but, so funny. So, But personally, I haven't had any crazy kinks. If I had to pick a kink, I'd yeah. probably pick feet. Like, I come home and you want to, like, give me a foot rub? That sounds like a fucking dream. Oh, yeah, but that's more like... That's like the That's, good side. It's not like a sexual thing. It's just like... It is, though. Oh, it would be? It is. Oh, okay. But like the idea that a man would love to rub my feet every day sounds <laughs> right. great. And then like the most negative thing that I've heard from friends who dated guys about feet, they're like, they'll want a foot job. And I'm like, all right, it sounds like a good core workout, though, you know? I remember in middle school, I was hanging out with this group of friends after theater camp, and we put like each other's feet in our mouths. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. I would just more be like, let me clean them. I think they were. Is that weird that I have? Would have, I would more be like, let me at least clean these first. You'd be like the Je you'd be you like the Jesus of would he clean feet? I think <laughs> I know he I did. Clean <laughs> Everybody clean their own feet. You know what I mean? Like, nah, I don't need to clean yours. But like, it's like when people talk about eating ass. I'm like, well, did you shower first? I'm less judgmental. Oh yeah. All right. And then uh, this man's on. This man's on. This is why I love talking. What's crazy? This guy's in a suit. There's a man on a suit talking, like FaceTiming on his phone. We're just going off. I think if we stay here, he'll he'll come to. All right, this is exciting. But I feel like, are we? Is he gonna get mad that we're filming? No, because we'll just pretend we're talking a different language or something. We're like, okay. I had to speak a little Spanish to find the train earlier, which is. Did you really? Yeah, dude. I was in deep Brooklyn and I was like, the traffic's bad. I gotta get a train. I asked my woman. She was like, oh, Espanol. And then I, I went back to my grade school Spanish. I was like, dónde está la RA subway? And then she was like, what? And then I said, Amarillo for yellow, and she knew what I was talking about. But this guy really he's really yelling it feels like he he's in a suit that you're like you're not homeless he's got his stuff together seems like it but maybe he's just maybe he lost a lot of money on nfts or something yeah i'm like usually we don't hear this version of it that right much. exactly exactly well he just walked he, by he's got clean shoes yeah so. all right oh i don't think he even think he's talking to anybody yeah then that's when it's scary the phone's black. All right, should we go the other way? Yeah. Should we go back, I feel to, bad. Should we go back to past the kids again? I feel should bad. we go another, should we go around the block? <laughs> Wait, what school is this? Is this a school? Parsons, I think. Oh. Part of Parsons. Oh, Parsons. Or there's an NYU engineering somewhere. New York. New York City College, College. of Technology. No, nope, CUNY. CUNY. There's a couple schools in this area, which I was surprised. Oh, I went to a CUNY school. Where? Hunter. Oh, I know where Hunter is. I went there for okay. a year and then I dropped, <laughs> dropped out. Damn. Dropout. Yeah, I am a college dropout two times. Went to two, two different schools. Both were like not for me. Did you? you did you just... graduate college overall or no? No. Oh, did you? Interesting. I did. Yeah, I went to St. Lawrence University. Oh, a that's small, a good one. Small school. Never thought I'd go small. Where's that? Uh, way up. It's actually near Montreal, Canada, but it's in New York, so it's right oh, on the border. That's cool. It's the opposite end of the state. Um, what did you? What did you major in? I originally went for a pre-dental, actually. Dental. Yeah. I thought I was going to go to dental school. I was very convinced. <laughs> I think those girls have a crush on you. I don't yeah, know what just happened. It happens. No, we anyway. just wanted to photobomb us. Maybe. 
Uh, yeah, I was originally pre-dental, and then because I played sports, it was too hard to like major in like bio or chem with all the labs. Oh, okay. So I just took all the credits and then ended up majoring communications. But then that made me be like, oh, I don't want to do dental school anymore. Uh huh. So I, I I bailed on it. My dad's a dentist. That was, Is he that really? Was the plan. Yeah. That, did, did, um, yeah, you have more space. My that's, brother ended up becoming a dentist, so it kind of was like, all right, you do you do the dental thing, I'll do something else. That's so you fascinating. Know? One of us became one. I think that's a that's success. That's so cool. I think that's awesome. It is, it is, but I was like, I don't want to do four more years of school. And then yeah. I remember being at my brother's graduation, and I'm like 27, and I was like, well, now it doesn't seem like it would have been that long. <laughs> oh. And now he makes great money, and I'm like, ah. Yeah, but you're having more fun. You don't have to look in people's mouths all day, you know? Well, the thing is, I did. I worked in my, my dad has an office. I worked in his office. Oh, you, you, you were a hygienist? Uh, no, so dental assisting, you don't need a degree. You just oh, get trained really? to do it. So I started getting trained for that. I worked in like the sterile aisle and then I worked as a dental assistant. What was some of the weird things that happened in the dentist's office? Weird things? Anything I crazy? Mean, well, when I was very young, my dad would get calls for some like emergencies, which is the worst of the worst. Well, yeah. So from a young age, I was like in there helping him, seeing like very bloody, very infected, uh. whatever it is type thing. What what would happen? Like what would what would the emergency be? Uh, like, I mean, most people would call about a toothache, uh, and he would discuss with them how bad it was. Like, do I need to come in and see you, or like come in first thing Monday, take right, Tylenol? Right. Right. Uh, uh, like I, you know, he wouldn't explain like really the depths of it, but sure. I remember having to see some like extractions. Wow. And things like that. Yeah. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah, but it was like from an early age, he was like, "Oh, okay, you're not afraid of blood," and like he would always say things to me growing up to try to almost groomed me into being a dentist, but oh, I don't blame him. You know, <laughs> yeah. it is a good life. It's a family business, too. Yeah, exactly. Like, he'd be like, oh, you have great, strong hands. You'd be a great dentist. Now, would that be considered, like, nepotism if you became a dentist and your dad, like, was a uh, dentist? No, because you've got to get into dental school. My dad doesn't run a dental school. Ah, uh, okay. It's like, basically, it's like, it's nepotism I where I would have to just graduate from somewhere. But at the same time, I would have to get my certification in New York. Because, like, where does the line end when, like, when it comes yeah. to nepotism? Like... You know, it's like you didn't graduate college, but you're still working under like Tony and Sons roofing and drywall because you're Tony's. Yeah, exactly. Son, like, I think it becomes nepotism. Nepotism often is when you get the job, right? Yeah. Sometimes it happens to get you into certain schools. Sure. But at the end of the day, like people with connections could go to a shitty ass school. That is true. Still get a job at a good place, uh -huh. make good money. That is true. So if anything, nepotism, you're like, Actually, you should just go to a shittier school and save money. Oh, Not shittier, sorry, yeah. excuse me. But like, uh, less there's no shame if you did community college two no. years and then state school two years in your hometown, lived at home. Yeah. Saved a ton of money because it was like, ah, at the end of the day, I'll get a good job at whatever marketing place or something. That, that might be the way to do it. Parents have a connection. Now, in you know St. I mean? Lawrence, were you in like Greek life? Was there like a sorority you were so, in? So the Greek life used to be huge like years ago, like in the 80s. Uh -huh. And then basically everything just kept getting shut down and stuff party wise. Yeah. So then all the Greek houses turned into theme houses. Oh. And it also is like a, since it's small, 50% of the- Wait, what's the theme house? So there'd be like outing club, artist oh. guild, um, and now I'm blanking, of course. Like, there'd be, like, photography house or something like that? Like, like a, not photography. Oh, there was, like, La Casa Latina. That just was, you had to be Latino. Uh, oh. There was Ray Ross house, which actually was technically football. It was, like, a big football player okay. that sponsored the house. Oh. But, like, so I didn't have, quote, Greek life, but I kind of did where it'd be, like, oh, there was a big party at Commons was another one, and that was, uh -huh. like, the community service one. Oh, interesting. So, and half the school was um, sports. Athletes. Oh, okay. So well, it would no, be a combo. It would be a combo of like we're going to the cross house or, you know, basketball suite, or we're going to house of whatever. Uh huh. And there were a couple sorority houses still, but all the frats kept getting kicked off, so there was no frat party house. Oh uh, yeah. But frats still existed, which made no sense to me. Yeah. I went to like a formal once. That's so funny. But it was like, so you guys have a party like twice a year with a formal, and they're like, pretty much. That's kind of. Yeah, that's it. And that's it. there's no house to live at. There's yeah. no rule. Yeah. No, and I, I was more in like the sports. Yeah. Playing with people. Well, what, do you play volleyball or basketball? Bas basketball. Yeah, I almost did both, and I was like, ah, it's just too much. Yeah. Well, that's good. Basketball's fun. Uh, I just watched Bama Rush on Netflix. This documentary about uh, see, that Russian and Alabama, nuts. and I just can't. I was like, why would you care? I, I just don't. <laughs> it just seems well, like, like it's a weird thing, right? Yeah, because it is. It's a whole other world that I'm just not a part of, and and of course yeah. I'm not. 18 about uh, in the in Alabama going to college, so maybe I don't know their experience, but it just seemed. Which way do you want to go from here? Uh, we can on, go right or left. So let's go right. Yeah. Can we We're make it with Jane this line? Willoughby. Okay. Well, that's the thing that's hard is like, I had a group of friends kind of automatically just being on a team. Yeah. That, even you, if you're not tight with everyone. Right. It was like I had a group to hang out with. I had a group to like help me in the know of parties and whatever. Yeah. 
But like, I get why people join sororities and stuff, because it's like if you're new and you're at a huge school, it's yeah. nice to have a home base. But yeah. at the same time, I just don't have the personality, even if I didn't play sports. The minute someone like tells me to do something, yeah. I don't want to do it. Exactly. I would, I'm with you there. Even, the if, even if I want to do it, I'm like, no. Oh, the pledging stuff, I'd be like, I don't the, have to wear makeup, go fuck yourself. Like, the, the wearing of the, the out, yeah, like you have to wear a certain outfit. Can't oh, leave nuts. your house without having your hair done. It's raining. Should we go somewhere inside? An awning? Yeah, it's up wonder. to you. We could sit under one of these umbrellas or interrupt these people's lunch. Oh. What time is it, you know? Um, let's find out. Let's take a look I here. Think we're good. What are we doing? A half hour? Stand under one of these weird I mean, awnings. It's just drizzling a teeny bit. It's one o'clock. Oh, I got plenty of time. This guy's doing construction. I don't know how much you edit these or not. Uh, I, I, yeah, I'm going to be editing a little bit more <laughs> than I used to, I think, just because I, I met this. Oh, God, this beeping is not going to be good. Yeah. I, um,. Are they done? Oh no, this isn't even a roof. We could stand under that this roof. way? Yeah. Or on this? Try I mean, if it is. stays like this, it's not bad. Yeah. If I don't want to should... ruin your camera. Oh That's no, perfect. it should be fine. <laughs> Fun thing about this camera is I was flying on American Airlines and I mm -hmm. put my camera in my ca in my checked luggage, yeah. which I normally never do. And I opened up my camera case when I got back to my apartment and my camera was gone. Filming. Oh, it was gone. It was, they oh, stole I it. said going. I was like, no, oh, was, someone filmed themselves. No, it was gone. It was someone from, oh, I damn. think someone in Mexico stole my camera. That so I wrote sucked. to American just being like, well, I don't know. Yeah, I'm did just, they replace it? They, they're they sending me a check for it. Oh, good. Which is incredible. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I felt like they never replaced shit. Yeah, I, didn't, I was so surprised to be like, yeah, we're going to send you a check for this for 600 bucks. Yeah. I was like, all right, finally, you're doing like the right thing. I mean, I had to send them like the receipt from yeah, when I bought yeah, it. Yeah. I had to send them like whole thing, a picture of my luggage. They just want to see what my luggage looked like. Yeah. Well, at least it wasn't a gun, right? Oh, that's true. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's, yeah, I guess it, you're right. I don't know if they'd replace that. Yeah. So after college, what was your like career path? Because if like, oh yeah, was it comedy driven at that point? Um, yes and no. I happened to end up in New York. I was like debating going to a year of grad school to get like. Something in like marketing, advertising. Oh, that's cool. Like I always liked being funny in some way. And then the classes I took in communications, like I would do really well on projects. I would like make a funny commercial or something. Oh yeah, that's so, fun. So I actually had a lot of teachers that were like, what would you want to do in your life? I was like, I'd be a comedian. And they were like, why are you in college? Ah. <laughs> they were like, why are you here? Um, and you know, you're just like, I thought that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Uh, so I ended up in New York. I was working at like an advertising company. They did like advertising for real estate. That's I was doing like real basic stuff. Uh huh. Not that exciting. Were you, they, like, were you writing copy or for? Yeah, like a little bit of copy. I was doing like the early Facebook ads. Oh, and cool. Stuff, but then also like data entry shit. Just you know, uh -huh. you're the bottom of the totem pole. Sure. I'll do whatever. The yeah. company didn't have a lot of money. I'm like, they only hired me part time. I'm living with my grandparents. And then I started doing like open mics, and I was like, in, in New York, in the yeah, city, in New York. And I took a comedy class. Actually, where, what I class had, did you take? It was uh, it was through Gotham. It was called like the Manhattan Comedy School. Oh, okay. So I was like, let me do this because I I didn't even know what an open mic was. Yeah, I took a comedy class too. Oh, you did? I did. In New York? I did with my with my younger brother. I was already kind of doing comedy at the time. Okay. Like, I think I was already even like doing shows at the cellar. Dude, every, I took two classes with this company. Every class would have families there. Oh, that's cute. Like it would be a brother and sister, a yeah. mom and daughters. It's like, a, oh, what a you know bucket list experience because you do a big graduation show. Yeah, so yeah. that's exactly why I did it. Like, I did it from and it was close to my apartment. We did it at the comic strip. Okay. With DF, yeah. you know DF. Swindler. No, I don't. He ran the class, and it was like just my brother and I and like twelve other people. Oh, nice. And we just did it to have fun and to like. And he had never done stand up before, so we just both were like, hey, let's take this class. And I was like newer at it too right so we but we had a blast it, yeah it was like such a fun thing and he he's like really funny so like i, I love to see him uh, on stage and... a few comics i met in my class actually have continued to do it oh that's all, who anyone we christiana know? jackson she used to go by miss c okay she was in like my first class and then my second class sydney washington was in it oh that's awesome yeah and it was so she was brand new too and it was nice to have people that then i would go to open mics like with them yeah now so she's on uh that show on ABC, um, right? Is Sydney, wait, is she on that TV show? Oh, you're talking, thinking about Janelle James? Oh, am I thinking of Janelle? Abbott Elementary? Oh, yeah. that's it, okay. Never but mind. like, Chris Stefano apparently took the class I took years ago. Yeah. And the owner of Gotham came into your class to talk one day and he's like, 
Listen, all right, this is like the Olympics, okay? Yeah. Only a few of you are gonna really continue this yep. and make it big time and really like love it. Like mm -hmm. he's like, you have to love it and be obsessed with it to do this for real. He's like, if this is just something you wanna try and get into and whatever, he's like, that's great. But he gave us like a real talk where he was like, kind of like, don't quit your day job, all right? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, but uh, it was really, really cool. And I, I didn't realize I had a bunch of them on my email list still. And I emailed for like the headlining show. Uh -huh. And I got a handful of emails from these people being like, oh my God, you're still doing it. I like was following you. Wow. It. I'm like, this is crazy. For the, they're they're going to come to the New York Comedy I'm, Club? Maybe. We can try oh, to get that's them to awesome. Come. Or no, the, you mean Tiny Cupboard. Oh, yeah, Us. Tiny Cupboard. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. New York Comedy Fest is what I meant. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. That's so fun. Okay, November 8th, <laughs> Tiny Cupboard, <laughs> Erica, Marcus. Thanks. 30 something Dude. it's gonna be a fun show super fun um yeah. but that's you know what's interesting is like people in that class mm -hmm. i almost feel like it's kind of bad if you have a career that makes a lot of money out the gate because you're so less likely to leave it to do anything that you would rather oh do. that's true did you have that uh like one of the guys that emailed he was like a finance guy i don't know what he did uh -huh. but i remember like in the class he was talking about like buying an apartment because paying a mortgage would be cheaper than his rent and oh. my good girl, Christiana, was a realtor. And she was like, yo, it's, what he's paying for rent is more expensive than a mortgage. Like, homeboy's making bank yeah, and paying absolutely. like six grand a month or something. Oh my gosh. Which we're just like, that's insane. That that's was money that we were money. like, that's, I've never heard of that in my life. Right. And I'm like 22, fresh out of college. Uh huh. But it's like, that guy was funny. He was mm -hmm. funny and a great dude. And like, who wow. knows how he would have done if he like went full time comedy? Yeah. But it's, you gotta weigh things in life where it's like the comfort of a day job is really great to have. Yeah. Like, this is the first year I've done a full year, no other income other than comedy. Oh, wow. And Congratulations. Stuff. I didn't Thank know you. that. That's... But it's like, it's terrifying. It is. But it helps that, like, oh, my bar of entry was lower because mm -hmm. I never had a salary job that was more than like 70K was the highest I made. Wow. That's, that's like, a lot, though. Salary. But that was like my latest one. Okay. Most of them would be about 40, 50. But I was like, I got health insurance, yeah. got enough to pay rent, and like live my life. Yeah. And they all were jobs. I picked jobs specifically that I was like, you just have to be flexible. Like I can leave at a certain time. That, that's then, key. That's very, know? I started performing full time, I think in 2007 or something, 2008 maybe. It's exciting, but also. It is, but it's, it's scary. Yeah. yeah. Especially because 2008 when the economy was so bad, Ooh, I just yeah. started performing on cruise ships and then like, it was like solid money, you know? Yeah. I would go on for like four days on, like two weeks off then four days on and two weeks, you know? And that's a game you have to play as a comedian, right? Because the gigs that pay the best are usually the worst gigs. Yeah, but because they have to. Otherwise, we wouldn't do them. That's right. And and but doing the worst gigs and that pay well also help you, afford you be, to yes. do like the gigs that are a lot of fun. Do you want to stay under? Well. I don't know. Yeah, stay under the scaffolding. Okay. That would be that's kind fun. of fun. Unless that the light's really bad. I was, that's what I was going to ask. Is it fun? And we might. You want to? It's not terrible. We'll live. As long as it's not raining. Yeah, I mean, you get chops like, uh, oh man, I was doing like a lot of like fundraising shows that are like randomly in a VFW. Oh, sure. Middle of nowhere. But hey, it was the most money I ever made in one night. It'd be like 300 bucks, 20 minutes. You're like, yeah. great. And uh, you you get chops there. And then you hit the point, you're like, okay, if I'm always on a cruise ship or I'm always in a VFW or even doing corporate You can't way, grow that way, right. It's not growing. It's more, it's like industry wise, you are completely off the map. Totally. So like they have that list every year, like the top 10 paid comics. Mm -hmm. Usually we only know a few of them by name. The right. rest are like, who the fuck are these people? Wasn't Jeff Dunham top of that list for a Jeff while? Jeff Dunham was top for a while. Yeah. It's like Jerry Seinfeld's always top, but I'm like, are they counting residuals from Seinfeld? Oh, like, they could be. You know, Ray Romano unfair. probably. But like Brian Regan, someone, for years he was on that list, no one knew who he was because he was clean and did so many corporates. Right. And eventually he broke and got a following and now does theaters. Yeah. But it's like, there's guys like that where are guys I've met on the road that headlined, and women, not yeah, just men, yeah, but you yeah. know. Uh, and I see them just get in that realm, like Rob Little is one. And oh, like, yeah. he's just cruise ship after cruise, like, and he's crushing it. He owns yeah. a house, wait, he's, he's making like, more wait, money. Rob, do I know him? He he's lives like, in Florida now. He's a cruise ship guy? Uh, yeah, often cruise ships. Ah, I didn't cruise know. Cruise ships, okay. corporate, but like, and he's killing it. Yeah. So there's an interesting thing with comedy where sometimes you gotta make a decision or almost more, it's like, how much is it your, your ego? that you like want to follow it. Yeah. Or how much is it your ego that you're using, not ego, a lot of times it's fear when you go, ah, but I'm making so much money and killing it. Fuck all that other stuff. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, because starting to do the other stuff puts you at the bottom. Right. You're, you know, or you're right. like, it, it, you suddenly when you measure it by money, it's like there's pluses to that and there's minuses to that. And there's no shame in being like, 
hey, I hit a point. I'm making great money. I want a house. I don't. I don't mm -hmm. care to do the hustle of like New York right. City anymore. Right. Good for you. Yeah. But then there's other people that get stuck in the New York City hustle. Yeah. Never do anything else. That's true. And that, that's that's the. I'm glad you just said that because there's a lot of people when I was doing cruise ships. They were like, I only do cruise ships. I'm like, mm -hmm. you only do cruise ships? Yeah. And then they get caught, like, because of the money. having sex with a passenger <laughs> or something. <laughs> and then they and get it, kicked off. Then they get fired. Then they have no connections on land. So I always did, like, yep. the five C's, colleges, cruises, comedy clubs, uh -huh. corporate. You got to try to. What is that? Maybe it's four. <laughs> four C's. Anyway, I would do all those. Like, charity I, shows. Let's charity, do that. Charity. Fundraisers, Fundraiser. like I was doing. So I was, yeah. So I would try to have, like, my hands on all these different markets yeah in case one of them went away and like i'm glad i did that because the college market kind of went away yeah very tough and i was doing before the pandemic i had like one fundraising show a month i would run it yeah. i bought equipment i had a spotlight and what i loved is i got other comedians work that's so and that nice. helped me build relationships to just like have a car ride get to know people yeah yeah like that really helped me when i got into the cellar i was like oh a lot of these people i've booked to headline and I've like spent a few hours with, so they at least know me. Mm -hmm. So you don't walk in and feel like a stranger. That's and like, so oh, nice. Erica, how are you? You're like, oh, okay, right. I feel more comfortable. But like, I hit a point where I was like, this isn't furthering my career. It's paying my rent, but it's not furthering my career. Right. Well, and then that's when you have to have like a check where you're like, what's more important that I make money from this? Yeah. And, or do I have other goals? And can you do both? Can you make money doing one thing while you can, still but I'm doing think, the hustle to. But with anything in life, I feel like everybody just gets very comfortable where they are. And yeah. that's something I'm struggling with right now of being in L.A. Mm -hmm. It is starting over a bit. Yeah, totally. I'm not as booked out there, right? Yeah. I'm still meeting people. Like, So you, you're you renting an apartment in Los Angeles? I just started renting an apartment, yeah. It's what part of L.A. are you friend. in? Um, I'm in West Hollywood. Oh, very cool. I got a great deal. My friend's been there a long time. She has a rent control place. Uh huh. And it was like things fell into place where I was like, I'm not going to get this good of a deal on rent <laughs> in New York anywhere right now. Right, yeah. And it just felt like timing was right. I got laid off from my day job. Mm -hmm. It was like, what's keeping me in New York? Dogs. There's, <laughs> yeah, dogs. dogs. But there's nothing I have to be here, and I can't, can come back for a couple weeks, work, do whatever. Like, I, I got a couple big gigs in October, and yeah. I was like, I'll just come back. That's great. For like two months, hang out. Yeah. And I'm fine. That's awesome that you so. can do that. Right, like, That's... I was like, I'll try it, they'll try it, but it's, but now I'm being like, are you making an excuse? Because in LA, you're nobody, you don't know as many people, uh -oh. you're not as busy, you don't I... make as much money. And it is hard to ignore the weight of that. Sure. Well, I think if you, you know, just, know that it's going to take some time to build that momentum again yeah. like you have here in LA and then also you'll be on the road too I'm sure like you'll be featuring you'll be you'll be doing your own dates well honestly like that's the thing about LA is it's pushed me to get back to pounding clubs and stuff like that yeah because I don't have any reps so right it's all me and yeah. I was doing that feature hustle and I was burnt out of it where I was like you know what let me like take a J job again the world shut down I was like okay I'll stay in New York I, just, I feel like I did the right thing. I got into some clubs finally and like built that up. Yeah. And then you're like, okay, again, it's that balance, like you said. Yeah. You can't just be doing, especially one comedy club. Yeah. If suddenly they don't like you anymore and they don't book you anymore, now what? Yeah. So that was yeah. the thing with like getting the comedy seller. I was like, for my audition, I was actually very calm because I was like, well, if this doesn't go well, you're just going to LA. Yeah. You'll just go sooner. And That's that what I said to myself. Like, you'll just be like, well, all right. So when you auditioned for the seller, you kind of yeah. already knew you wanted to go to LA. I have been toying with the idea for a long time because uh, I had a lot okay. of friends out of there friends. who were killing it out there telling me I should go out there. Yeah. And it's hard to not listen to people that are more successful than you, first of all. That's true. But then the hard part about getting into the cellar is now you're around successful comedians all the time. Yeah, and that's so funny. And if you tell any of them, they're like, why the fuck would you leave? You got into here. And it's yeah. Like, because I don't, you can't essentially say to somebody, I don't want to get stuck here because it makes you feel like. You're it, talking it sounds down like, to them a little I'm, bit. No, no, I'm, it sounds like I don't appreciate being in there. Oh, sure. Which I do. Yeah, of course. But I was like, you know, you can't say it to certain people because I'm like, yeah, certain people are stuck here. Mm -hmm. And then you lose motivation to do other things. And if you're happy doing that, though, great for you. I don't think I would be. Yeah. I'm I, like, I want more than just this. Exactly. I'm, I'm with you. I'm always wanting more. I'm like never fully satisfied with, with anything. Yeah, you know, and don't make this the clip. So I don't want to get banned from there. But you know, no, of course not. Of course not. No, <laughs> but it's the honest. You're truth. absolutely not. No, I, I don't truth. think anyone would would disagree with that. You want more than just past that. You want, you know, you're you don't want to just be at the cellar every night. You could have a great yeah. life doing that. And it was so funny because like you and I probably ran in different circles. Mm -hmm. in the comedy scene in the city. I didn't meet you until I worked there. I, yeah, same here. But then we were like together like every night yep. for like two months. Oh, so I was wow. like, oh, what's up, Erica? Hey, Erica. <laughs> Erica's back. All right, I'm Marcus and Erica. All right. Yeah. So it's kind of funny how that happens too. 
Um, yeah, because the... Because the thing, thing about there is I'm like, I have to kill here. I'm new. Yeah. I have to kill here. You're with yeah. the best of the best. I have to do my best stuff. Yeah. But then I don't feel a freedom to try new things. That's, the, that's, so, I'm so happy I was working there that. for months doing like the same, like 25 minutes rotating sure. whatever jokes. Yeah. And I just got so sick of my material. Same. And I was like, I need new I mean, shit, I need but I can't try your, it here. I didn't get sick of your material. I, I would get sick of mine. But yeah, but exactly. I'm like, how, and everybody there is like, just do what kills. Just yeah. Do what, they're yeah. like, don't, they don't care if you keep repeating jokes. Yeah. Just do what kills. You'll yeah. still be getting booked. That's true. And they're and not wrong. They're but, not wrong. And I do have, like, I, I got passed in 2019, and I've been, I don't do the same exact set every time, but I kind of, I stay close to home. Yeah. You know, I don't go too far. Yeah. Uh, although I do. It's intimidating. It is. That's why I love doing like bar shows or like other anything, any other club on a Tuesday or Wednesday where you can just kind of be a little bit more lenient and try new things. The biggest thing I notice about people that come up not in New York is they have longer bits. And I'm so fucking jealous of their long bits. Long bits are nice. Take up and a lot that's, of time. And that's what helps when you headline. It's a yeah. totally different muscle. Mm -hmm. And and just crowds outside the city are so much more patient. Yeah. You'll bomb a joke. They don't even know. They're just listening. Yeah. They're just yeah. like, it'll be funny. That, like they just trust you. You're right about that. New York yeah. has a gun to your head. Like, you better be So what are the differences between L.A. comedy and New York comedy? All right, New Yorkers might hate this. L.A. comedians are better performers, hands down. They're more they theatrical? Are, they, they Just stage presence alone. Like, confidence, movement. And I think, naturally, a lot of people in L.A. do more, like, acting classes and things like that. But it's like, their emphasis is the performance part. New York emphasis is the writing part. Uh huh. But like when LA comics shit on New York, they do this pose and don't move. And they're like, oh, that's exciting comedy. And they're not wrong. And it's made me look at my own set and be like, I need a little more movement and a little more energy. Yeah. But in a way that's still true to me. Sure. I'm not saying you have to be like the act out king or act out Yeah, king, right. But it's, it's amazing that I'm like, oh, even their comics that are more like almost deadpan and writing heavy still yeah. have a better stage presence than a lot of comedians in New York. And again, that's partly due to the amount of time, the patience, yeah. the size of the stage. There's just more space in LA. Um, all right. It's all very interesting. Oh, they're doing street interviews. All right. Look at that. Let's be on the They're news. Set up, your setup's a lot better than ours. Yeah, it's very fancy. What is it? What's the question? It's a documentary on AI. Oh. Just like getting people on the street, just, I mean, with Oh, we're no both in the comedy thing. industry, actually. Not, or are you? Yeah. We're both comedians. We're both comedians. Yeah. Oh, really? So, oh. I don't know if you want to take on the AI with the writer's strike. Yes, absolutely. If I you mean, like. you know, we did a comedy club the other night. It, uh, it was in Brooklyn. And the it, it was Brooklyn AI. Comedy Club? Yeah, it was Crystal Lake. Oh, but it's AI, that's, yeah. The AI comedy, yeah, we, okay. we shot there. Interesting to help people in whatever field that they're in. Uh, I'm a comedian, so I'm in entertainment, so there's actually a really big battle right now with entertainment and AI. Can you tell us your name for the camera? Uh, do you want me to look to camera or look at you? You, okay, my name is Marcus Monroe. What do you see as the upside and the downside of it? Well, obviously the downside would be taking people's jobs away, right? Uh, although, the upside is it could help with people's jobs, make them better. <laughs> this is, is this AI? No. I, uh, <laughs> Um, so, but I'm sure people, I'm, some people are influenced by seeing AI in pop culture and, and thinking it's a completely different thing than what it, what it actually is. Like, you know, you saw those um, robots at that football game. Uh, like, maybe some people think that's what AI is just going to be, like stadiums full of robots. But that, like, they don't have money, so like they wouldn't even be able to go to the game. All right, guys, thank you guys. Have a great thank one. Nice to see you guys. Nice to meet you guys. Our yeah. pleasure. All right, we gotta take you. You gotta go. Hey, appointments will be right around this corner. All right. Do you still have your mic? Yeah, I'm still mic'd. I they they asked me to head it. I don't know. Filmed it. Look at us. <laughs> We're showing in a show. <laughs> I love it. That th that is the exact reason why I love doing this show because you never know what's gonna happen. <laughs> At first, I thought the only exciting thing would be like the crazy man talking on the phone, but no. It was hilarious. No. They're like, oh, actually, we want people that really know nothing about it. It's yeah. like, okay, well, you can't steer the documentary <laughs> the way you want it to go. That was fun. have never heard of AI. Yeah. No, oh, yeah. So as I asked them, they're doing a documentary. Yeah, I took, yeah. Catnip Productions. It's a pilot. That's what they told us, at least. You never yeah. know. I signed something. It's not sold to anyone yet. But yeah. They're going to eventually try to sell it. So you might see Erica and I on Netflix. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully the, it's on Netflix. What if, be what if Netflix that's how we get on Netflix? That, honestly, it might be. <laughs> I'm going to walk around with a GoPro now not even filming. Just well, like don't forget, you can see Erica uh, and myself at the New York Comedy Festival. 
November 8th at the Tiny Cupboard. And Erica, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, I'm at Sperica on pretty much everything. At Sperica. S-P-E-R-I-C-A-A. Yeah. I hope this was interesting for everybody. I, a little bit of ADD of an episode, <laughs> but you know, you were think a busy part of Brooklyn. That's pretty much all, all it is, is just, oh, uh, oh you got to go this way. All right, we did it. We did it. Talkie walkie. Yeah. Woo.